Zimbabwe's thorniest issue is back again as government rolls out a new land reform program. More than 3.5 billion US dollars will be spent in compensation to white farmers whose land was seized in the early 2000s. Former President, uh, the late Robert Mugabe, instituted land without expropriation from July 2000, and this led to this uh, led to violent sieges and invasion of white-owned land and farms. The land grabs were a major factor which led to Zimbabwe or rather Zimbabwe be sanctioned by the West. Now it seems government wants to pay for the land or help the former farmers take deed over the land again. An effort Musegua and Noma Bolani filed this report. It's been two decades since Zimbabwe first fast-tracked land reform, forcibly taking land from white farmers and giving it to black people. The controversial exercise polarized citizens. The white owners felt robbed, but for the landless black majority, it was the final victory against colonial imbalances. Now government is reversing the decision. Many feel betrayed by the current regime, including the opposition. Uh, the global compensation agreement signed between Mnangagwa and uh, uh, white farmers in respect of which 3.5 billion US dollars uh, was given in respect of compensation for improvements. We are against the, these three uh, legal instruments, i.e. SI 62 of 2020, uh, 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 the global compensation agreement and the recent uh, announcement. We wish you to make it very clear that the whole basis of the liberation struggle was the issues around uh, the land. But be that as it may, the truth of the matter is that from a supply side, of, 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 from a supply side point of view, from a liberaliz liberalization point of view, from a democratization point of view, the land reform has resolved uh, the liberation grievance uh, of, 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 of land. And the constitution protects that. The constitution makes a reversal of the land reform a, a program a unconstitutional but through the back door through these insidious uh, instruments si 62 of 2020 uh, the global compensation agreement and now this statement it is so clear that emerson Mnangagwa is moving towards a regime of uh, reversing the land reform program the disappointment over this new development stems a lot from the fact that former president robert mugabe's land grabs were mostly beneficial to ruling party elites, military veterans and their associates. Land Zimbabwe for Zimbabweans. Land to the people. The seizures that began in July 2000 were violent and sparked international outcry. And with the country experiencing severe food insecurity due to climate change and a weak economy, skepticism is high on the fruitfulness of this new venture. But the government insists on going ahead with the multi-billion U.S. dollar reverse land program. It's not a reversal, it is a clarification. It is very clear from the statement that we have made that the land remains. We are going to offer compensation for improvements. With respect to beepers, those are a special case. We're going to honor our bilateral investment agreements. With respect to indigenous farmers, we have taken a deliberate policy position that these farms, in terms of SI62, be returned to the indigenous owners. So there is no confusion, at least in my mind, that Zimbabwe is moving forward. By clarifying these land issues, it means that we can focus on what we must focus on, which is increasing production, productivity, and ensuring that for once, Farming and farmers get to do what they know best so that our country can become food secure again. The new program has been met with mixed reaction by the former farmers. Some believe taking ownership of the now rundown farms will prove costly in the restoration and business setup. They are seeking monetary reparations instead. Others, however, have welcomed government's latest move. It's taken us a long time to get there. I appreciate what government has done so far for us. And I'd just like to say, or reiterate, that farmers today we have got a commitment. Every single farmer in Zimbabwe has a commitment. And it's time that we stand up and prove our worth in producing food for this country. We've had enough chances. We need to get on with it.
I don't think any of us as farmers are proud that we have to import food into this country from South Africa or anywhere else. So I, I support government that we've got to get agriculture back to uh, what it was and we can be proud of it. For years, environmental, social and economic analysts have blamed Mugabe's land reform program for wreaking havoc on the agricultural sector. Zimbabwe was once Africa's breadbasket with major exports of maize, wheat and tobacco. But now, it's a country reliant on aid and imports. Going back 23 years when the government issued the first acquisition orders for agricultural land, that took the land off the market. It made the land no longer acceptable as collateral to the banks. So even if the farmer hadn't yet been dispossessed, he couldn't borrow from the banks. So his production fell. So for 23 years, we've been importing food. Before that, we hardly ever imported food because we were usually a surplus food producer. Now, if you add up the amount we spent on food for the last 23 years, which we shouldn't have had to spend, it adds up to billions and billions of dollars. It adds up to so much money that we could not service our international debts. Meanwhile, military veterans who were the main beneficiaries of the land grabs are threatening government with legal action over this new plan. They say this new reform program is tantamount to selling out. The group wants government to reverse their decision that will allow payments for land seized and or the redistribution of farms to white farmers. Nama Polani, SABC News. Now, let's talk about this, and we joined via Skype by Ben Frith, who is the spokesperson of the Sadek Tribunal Rights Watch in Zimbabwe. Thank you very much for joining us on our program. Thank you. It's good to be able to speak to you. What do you make out of uh, this uh, compensation, global compensation deal on the balance of scales, uh, the people, the farmers versus the government? Well, I think from the farmer's point of view, obviously there's a lot of desperate farmers that are uh, wanting to get some form of compensation. There's a lot of elderly farmers that uh, cannot put bread on the table any longer. Uh, they had everything taken from them. Um, but at this stage, there is no money at all of the three and a half billion that government wants to uh, compensate farmers. Um, so. At the moment, it is a little bit of a white elephant, um, and we don't believe that there are a lot of safeguards regarding um, anything actually being forthcoming. So for us, I think many of us are feeling that this is uh, more of a propaganda coup to the government uh, to make it look as though they're coming back to rule of law, um, which we don't, do not believe is the case at this point. So, so then, in your view, why has the government agreed to this deal, which seems to be a slap in the face of other people who are saying that uh, this was actually uh, based on the liberation struggle about land, that it should go to the people, but all of a sudden they call it a reversal. But the government says that it is not a reversal, it's a correction. Yeah, at this stage, it's not a reversal at all. And, and there seems to be a lot of um, misunderstanding about this fact. You know, government made it very clear this week that only about 36 farmers would be allowed to go back to their land, and uh, white farmers, that is. And those are farmers with bilateral investment treaties from countries like Germany and uh, Switzerland and Denmark, um, and Austria and a few other countries. So it's only 36 farmers out of many thousands of farmers that will be allowed to go back to their land. Uh, so it seems to be, as I say, more of a propaganda exercise than uh, something with any real foundation. Uh, and it will not lead to increased production. Those 36 farmers, not many of them would want to go back to their farms at this stage uh, with the lawlessness that prevails on the land in Zimbabwe even now. I was speaking to someone who has had 136 days in court so far for committing the crime of farming on his own land. Uh, and he has a jail sentence hanging over him. You cannot farm under such circumstances um, and be uh, 
wholehearted and productive and, and looking forward as farmers should. So if you think that uh, you know, this is not going to really make an impact in as far as food production is concerned, uh, then I mean, like, why this compensation deal and where will this money go to, even if it goes to the right or wrong hands? Well, this is what we um, are unsure of. At the moment, there is no money of the three and a half billion. They're saying to the farmers, you need to go out and try and raise the money from the international community to try and get compensation for yourself um, or for yourselves. Uh, Parliament hasn't even agreed to it yet. Um, so there are many steps to be taken before any money is forthcoming. But they are saying that there will be no compensation for the land itself. This is just for improvements. No compensation for the tractors, for the crops that were stolen, for uh, all the movable assets that were taken, the, the, the animals that were killed, no, no compensation whatsoever. So it's a very uh, a small amount of compensation that's being offered in the great scheme of things, especially when you look at the one farmer who did go to arbitration. He had a bilateral investment treaty and was awarded 200 million US dollars. So the three and a half billion dollars is, is not many farmers um, in actual fact. Uh, it, it, it is a small amount to what has been lost uh, under international law. And, and what we need, I believe, is uh, to go back to the rule of law. We need to, uh, the SEDEC tribunal judgment that, that we got in the SEDEC tribunal to be honored. It was a final and binding judgment. It's recognized in international law. It's been registered in South Africa and elsewhere. Uh, it, we need to go back to the rule of law. Otherwise, we will not see production. We will not see employment. We will not see a recovery of Zimbabwe. This is grandstanding that we are seeing at the moment. There is no fundamental change. Do you have a sense of what, uh, what is the stance of uh, corporate Zimbabwe, the whole agricultural support institutions, and of course uh, the banks in as far as uh, this uh, reconstruction and revival of the ag agricultural system of Zimbabwe? Well, I think what the banks need to see is the collateral value of uh, property being able to be realized. And, and at this point, um, what has been done does not do that. Um, government is talking about 99-year lease, leases. They said at the Commercial Farmers Union Congress in uh, September last year, so nearly 12 months ago, that they were going to fast track uh, giving 99-year leases to farmers. This hasn't happened. There are farmers not getting these 99-year leases. And even if they did get the 99-year leases, they do not have a collateral value because they can be cancelled in 90 days. So the banks cannot use that collateral to be able to uh, lend money to people and get investment coming in and get production starting to happen again because government needs to control those people, make sure that those people are uh, still on the land, feel that they are insecure. And so the financial institutions are not able to uh, put money in. And, and we've got this massive liquidity problem. People are going into an agricultural season now. There is no collateral value to their land. They are struggling to get the financial institutions interested in giving them money uh, to, to be able to get productive again. Does one get a sense out of what you're saying that there's a trust and policy deficit in as far as uh, security is concerned and guarantee for those uh, 99 year leases for anybody who takes that uh, there are conditions in place but they may not necessarily be in the favor of a farmer that's exactly right you know the, the 99 year lease is a, a, a massive document it's not a simple document and there is a lot of small print in that document um, it runs to getting on for 100 pages. Um, and government at any time can cancel that 99-year lease and a farmer can end up with only 90 days left on the farm. And so the banks, the financial institutions who are looking at lending money are saying, well, we cannot put any long-term finance into uh, these farms because government can take them back at any time. And what we're seeing 
is, is exactly that happening. We're seeing um, farmers all the time living in insecurity, uh, unable to know whether they're going to be there um, tomorrow or not. Uh, and so there's, there's huge risk involved in putting any investment into the land at the moment. And, and it's all about control. It's all about a government that is, uh, realizes that it has lost the support of the people and so therefore has to have the people uh, living in fear, living in fear that their properties may be taken, living in fear of their very lives. Um, and, and we're seeing that now more than ever in Zimbabwe, and it's uh, a very distressing situation with nearly 10 million people uh, needing food aid um, by, by Christmas. It's, it's um, a, a tragic situation that we're seeing. All right, uh, Ben, thank you very much for making time to speak to us. And it looks like uh, it's a long way to go and this discussion won't end today. Uh, but we'll keep tabs on how it develops. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much. It's very sad and, and please pray for Zimbabwe. Okay, we'll certainly do. Well, uh, we're speaking here to Ben Frith, who is the spokesperson of uh, the Stardec Tribunal Rights Watch Zimbabwe. We're going to take a break and we'll see you uh, just in a moment.